this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme five, element five, high pressure systems. So do up that top button and get out a pen. I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. We're gonna be looking today at how to identify high pressure systems from a synoptic chart and the hazards that this system can produce. So let's start off by looking at a recap of what high pressure actually is. So high pressure is descending cold air from the upper atmosphere. It's incredibly dry because it's expended all of that moisture at the low pressure side of the system, creating rain. So this descending air is not going to produce any clouds or any rain, and it's going to bring a lot of stable weather. So it's going to push all of the moisture that is around to the ground, so there is no formation of clouds or water vapour at all. And it's what we'd associate with our better weather, so our summers. It is very stable, so this sort of hangs round for a long period of time. But what does it look like on a weather chart? So this is a synoptic weather chart. I go into a bit more detail on this in our last lesson. So if you're not familiar with a synoptic chart, you might want to look at lesson 5.4 as well. But we will expect to find some similarities between the two to start with. So we've still got isobars, which are lines that join up similar pressure values in this case. So you can see my arrows pointing to a line that signifies 1,020 millibars of pressure, and it runs across the map along the north. We've also got space between the bars, but on the high pressure chart, as we can see here, there's a lot more space between each of these bars. So that means it's gonna take a longer space of time, or a longer space, to go from, in this case, 1,028 millibars of pressure to 1,024 millibars of pressure. That's important to know because it means effectively that we're not going to have very much wind or it's going to be no wind or very calm. Out here where there's no extra iso line in, iso bar in place that you can see, there's probably going to be no wind at all over here. We've also got the identification, my arrow's a little off here, of where the highest pressure is. So you've got the X signifying this and then you've got the H with the high pressure and the spot value of 1,032 millibars of pressure. Anything over 1,000 millibars is generally seen as being high pressure. So what hazards can this produce? Well, there are two and the, uh, they are linked. So if we get, as I said, um, stable air in a stable weather system, so it's gonna hang around for a couple of days to a couple of weeks, and we've got no cloud cover and sun's coming in constantly, then there is the potential for a heat wave. So that's when the um, hot weather is, or hotter weather than what we're compared to on an average for that particular area that we're in in that particular time of year. So, for example, we've had some in the south of England before, and um, Northern America and Australia have had these as well in recent time. If we have a heat wave for a couple of months, we've got no rain coming in, extended high temperatures then we've got the potential for what's called a drought. And a drought is where we have a deficit of water to meet the needs of our environment and us as a population. So I've got some information here on the Californian droughts so the, and the Californian wildfires from 2012 to 2015. So because of the drought, the placed hose pipe pans, bans in place, but we've done that in England as well in the south. Homes were destroyed by wildfires and as we mentioned, California and um, Australia have also seen wildfires in recent months. If an area depends on hydroelectricity for power, you've got to have a lot of water behind a dam to drive those turbines. So if there's no water, you've got no electricity. Crops would fail because there's no water for irrigation, and that would then lead on to a lack of or a loss of jobs in agriculture as well. So in California, that was uh, 17,000 jobs lost. And it can even cause death of flora and fauna. So the example used there is fish had died because there's a decrease in oxygen and higher uh, ocean temperatures. But think of wildfires, death of animals and the vegetation around it as well. Finally, I'd like you to direct your attention to this map here. So this green line represents what's called the jet stream. And the jet stream is a fast column of air in our upper atmosphere. And it's responsible for where exactly our high and low pressures might be found. You can think of it a bit like a flexible fence. On one side, it's got the good weather, in this case in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, this high pressure to the south and this low pressure to the north. 
when the jet stream in this case in 2012 moved slightly further north than it usually would, the high pressure that would usually be down in Mexico was forced further north. And that's brought the stable warm weather, unfamiliar for that time of year, which has caused the heat wave and drought in California. But it's also pushed what would have been the storms that California would have had at the time further east. So Canada has then ended up with the storms that California would have once had. Right. Well, that about wraps up our five minute lesson. I don't doubt that you've all caught up on high pressure. Don't forget to complete the try it now tasks for homework. Class dismissed.